Okay, welcome back. Uh, what we talked about last time was in trying to understand functions in terms of various ways of picturing them. Now, what we will do today is to talk about functions from R2 to R2. So, R2 is the plane to the plane and let us just do this by examples. So, I am going to write out uh, a sequence of examples. So, let us take first example to be the function f of x y equals x plus 1 comma y plus 2. Okay. Now, let us try and picture this function try and understand what it does. So, typically how does one want to understand uh, functions from R 2 to R 2. So, here is the here are the various uh, you know ways of thinking about R 2 you know what are various subsets of R 2. So, R 2 has points. So, each, each of this is a point in R 2. The other uh, subsets of R 2 of interest might be say lines or more general curves. So, for instance I could think of lines or maybe I could think of circles or maybe even more general curves like parabolas or ellipses or just more even more arbitrary curves. So, I could look at lines, I could look at circles. So, these are points are sort of what we often call 0 dimensional objects, lines are just 1 dimensional, circles are also just 1 dimensional, the plane itself is 2 dimensional and uh, we could also look at regions in the plane. So, by a region we mean sort of a two dimensional thing. So, let us say you know you could take the region that is inside a circle. Right. So, this disc is often what you would call a region in R 2. Of course, a region need not have such a nice shape it could be a bit more arbitrary shaped region. So, here are various subsets of R 2. And one way of trying to understand a function f is to see what it does to each of these kinds of things. Okay. So, at the, at the very basic level what you are really given is how a function acts on a point x comma y to produce another point. Okay. So, let us first think of what this function does to a typical point in R 2. So, we have the point x comma y. here is the point it is 1 unit to the right and 2 units above point x y. Okay. So, what this function does is really the following it takes this point x comma y and moves it or maps it to this point here okay. and it sort of does this uniformly it does this to every single point on the plane it takes it and moves it by the same same distance and, and the same uh, direction. So, it takes this point it would similarly move it parallelly, this guy would also move parallelly. Okay. So, sometimes this map here is called a translation, and it is a translation by the vector 1, comma 2, if you wish. Okay. So, it translates everything by that uh, by that amount 1 unit to the right and 2 units above. So, now uh, let us ask the, so this is actually a very very simple sort of map, uh, what it does to everything is pretty much has the same description, what does this map do to a line for instance. So, suppose I have a line on the plane, asking what it does to the line is like asking you know what does it do to all the points of this line. So, every point of this line moves by the same amount, right. So, all points of this line slide up to those points and so this line here let us call it L maps to a parallel line. Okay, so, this is L dash. So, what it does is well it sort of also translates the line L by the same amount 1 comma 2. So, lines map to parallel lines. So, line L what is it? go to under the function f it goes to a parallel line. Okay. 
L dash which is shifted by the amount 1 comma 2 ok and well you can think of the same thing if you have a circle the same thing will happen it will go to a shifted circle something shifted by the amount 1 comma 2 or more generally if I have a region the same thing. So, if I have some sort of region on the plane then what does this function do to this region. Uh, so, you, you look at what it does to all points of this region all points move by that amount. So, of course, what this function ends up doing is really the same thing. So, it moves this region up by the same amount ok. So, this is the new region R dash the original region R. So, R maps to R dash under this function f and what is R dash it is just a shift it is just uh, R shifted by 1 2 that is basically R dash ok. So, a translation is very very easy to describe it just does sort of the same thing everywhere it just moves everything by some fixed amount ok. So, let us uh, look at the second example if I have a function defined as follows x comma y equals x comma minus y ok. So, again first let us try and understand what this function does to points. So, if I have a point x comma y on the plane what this function does is well it keeps the x coordinate the same, but maps it to the point x comma minus y ok. So, the point uh, let us call it a maps to the point a dash under this function. So, a goes to a dash and what is a dash? Well, one way of describing a dash is to say it is just a reflection of this point a about the x axis. So, observe a dash is just the reflection of a about the x axis ok. So, this map f here it is again very easy to describe it just does a simple reflection <coughs> about the x axis ok. So, again similarly if you have uh, say a one dimensional subset say I have a line in R 2 and I want to know how does this function transform this line what does it do to this line. So, I just see what it does to each point of this line well similarly it just maps it reflects each point of this line about the x axis. So, it just gives me a line it gives me the reflected line. So, this is what the function would do it is just a mirror image. So, this is a line L maps to the line L dash ok and observe of course, these lines will uh, will intersect somewhere on the x axis. So, that is the picture for what it does to lines. Now, you know and, and similarly if you want to do regions and so on it is not much harder, but here is a often an important and illuminating aspect that helps us understand some of these functions that is the notion of an invariant figure ok. So, what is an invariant figure? we will call uh, a figure by a figure I, I mean it in the most general sense could be points, lines, curves, regions and so on. An invariant figure is one which is uh, which does not move under the function in some sense which is mapped to itself under the function. So, what is an invariant figure? I will call a figure f uh, maybe let us not call it f let us call it uh, ok an invariant figure is the following you say that a figure k is invariant under f if when you apply f to that figure which means you apply f to each point of that figure what you get back is that same figure that you started with ok. In other words it somehow maps that figure onto itself. 
So, let us do some examples to get a better sense of what this does. Uh, let us do it for the case of the reflection about the x axis. So, we will come back to translation. So, if I take the reflection about the x axis observe that any figure that is symmetrical about the x axis. So, for instance, if I take say a rectangular figure like this which is symmetric about the x axis say if I take this region for instance to be k then when I reflect it about the x axis what I get back is the same region because the top half will map to the bottom half and the bottom half maps back to the top half. So, observe this k is invariant. for the reflection right for, for under the reflection about the x axis. Similarly, pretty much any figure that is symmetrical about the x axis will be invariant. Now, let us think about translation. So, here is the first question is there anything at all that is invariant under the translation ok, because it seems as if the translation moves everything right it seems to move everything in one uniform fashion. So, no matter which region you tend to think of anywhere it seems as if the translation will move it, but observe a line for instance. So, if you took so imagine the following you take a line L which passes through the point 1 comma 2 ok you know and through the origin. Now, imagine what the translation will do to this line. Well, what it will do is to move every point on this line by 1 comma 2. So, the point 1 2 moves to the point 2 4, 2 4 will move to the point maybe 3 5 or 3 6 and so on, but pretty much no matter which point you take on the line what you will get is another point on the same line ok. So, the line sort of slides up by 1 comma 2. So, here is an example of a figure. So, if you take k here to be this line or in fact any line parallel to this one then uh, you apply the translation you will find that k in fact does not change k is invariant under the translation. Okay, so, good we have talked about uh, translations and we have talked about reflections. So, here is another one. <coughs> f of x comma y equals minus y comma x. So, let us try and see what this does firstly to points. So, if you imagine a point somewhere here let us call it x comma y minus y uh, comma x. So, minus y is that is the new x coordinate and then x. So, that is this and if you sort of try and compute angles and so on you will find exactly this is a 90 degree angle. Okay, so, what is this map to? Well, it takes every point and rotates it counterclockwise by a 90 degree angle. So, this is nothing but the anti clockwise rotation <coughs> by a 90 degree angle. So, that is what it does to each point on the plane. So, of course, it is easy to see what it does to other things. For instance, say the x axis the line which is the x axis will of course, map to the y axis because it is a 90 degree rotation. The y axis similarly will map back to the x axis or in general. So, let us just say this. So, the x axis under this map f will map to the y axis. In fact, the y axis also maps to the x axis under this map and in general any line will just map to the line that is perpendicular to it. If you take a line through the origin 
you rotate at 90 degrees. So, it, it maps to a perpendicular line L will map to L prime. So, that is what happens to lines region similarly you imagine a region uh, anywhere on the plane and just what you get is the rotated region. But again what is interesting here is to look for invariant figures. So, does rotation have <coughs> invariant figures at all? So, here is one obvious figure which is just the circle about the origin. If I take a circle about the origin and imagine what happens when you rotate it by a 90 degree angle, well you just get back the same circle. right? So, a circle through the origin is in fact uh, invariant under this transformation. But of course, uh, one can even find other such invariant figures because all you are doing is just a 90 degree rotation. So, imagine placing a square in this fashion, it is not a very good figure. So, imagine this is a square and you sort of look at what happens when you rotate this by a 90 degree angle all that will happen is that you know this vertex will now coincide with the next one that will coincide with the next one and so on. So, here is an example of a figure which is invariant under a 90 degree rotation. So, a circle is special in the sense it is in fact invariant under rotation by any angle not just by 90 degrees. So, this figure is very special it is invariant if you rotate it by 90 degrees 180 degrees or 270 degrees, but not by you know other angles if you rotate by say a 45 degree angle this would not give you back the same figure whereas, the circle is sort of perfectly invariant under every possible rotation. Okay. So, we have looked at three functions the translation the and they have the following interesting property. So, for now what have I done I have given you examples of three functions the translation function the reflection about the x axis <coughs> the rotation through 90 degrees. So, we have looked at three such functions and one interesting thing aspect of all of them is the following that they all map a region R to a congruent region R dash. So, if R is any region in R 2 and you take any one of these three fellows translation reflection or rotation what does it do to R okay, it maps it to R prime. So, this can be a translation reflection rotation any one of these three acting on the region r will give you a congruent region r prime ok. What does congruence mean? So, where r prime is congruent to r ok. Congruent remember means the following that you can superimpose r on r prime in such a way that they coincide exactly ok. So, that is what congruence means. So, observe if I had say imagine you have a region. So, of course, if you translate it by some amount clearly it is the same region right. So, the translated region r prime is it is clear it is congruent to r it is just a copy of r that is just physically moved by that amount. Uh, a reflection well in order to make uh, these two things coincide. So, if I have uh, let us say, so I have a figure like this <coughs> say that is my region R and if I look at what happens to it under the reflection well this will map here <coughs> the you know this, this, this point and this point will map to a point here and a point there. So, maybe we will just draw it a little better. So, that is the reflection about the x axis of this original figure r, but again it is clear they are congruent in order to make them superimpose you just need to align the correct sides together. So, for instance this side here has to be aligned with this this hypotenuse here and similarly. So, I am imagining this is a right triangle. 
uh, similarly this horizontal side <coughs> aligns with this and likewise for the third. <coughs> and similarly for a rotation when you rotate of course, the entire figure moves by some amount, but you now you need to reorient it you need to sort of rotate it back in order to make them align with each other. Okay. So, it is again sort of visually clear that um, rotations also give rise to congruent regions uh, if you take a region r it maps it to a congruent region r prime. So, in particular these have the property that they do not change areas of regions. So, you know what is the property of translation reflection and rotation well translation reflection rotations they preserve areas. So, if in R it gives me back another region of the same area in fact, it gives me back a region which is congruent in fact, it preserves lengths it preserves angles. Okay. So, it preserves all of these. So, what does it mean to preserve lengths and angles? Well, if I have a line segment somewhere on the plane and say let us say this is segment and if I see what happens to it under a translation I get back another line segment of the same length. Likewise, if I reflect it or I rotate it the length of the line segment that I get does not change I always get it may be is oriented slightly differently, but I get the same thing that is what length preservation means angle preservation means imagine I have two line segments and now I take this figure here and I say translate it or I reflect it or I rotate it. Now, doing any of these three will never change the angle between the, the resulting line segments. Okay. It cannot deform the angle between them it can only move this entire figure somewhere else. Okay. So, this property of translations reflections and rotations is sometimes uh, encapsulated by saying that these are all rigid motions. Okay. So, because of these properties that they do not really change either lengths or angles we often say that uh, translations reflections and rotations are often called rigid motions of the plane. So, by rigid motions we mean you just move think of moving the entire plane in some way as sort of like a rigid body imagine the whole thing is made out of you know metal or something which cannot be deformed then you sort of move the whole thing or maybe you you reflect you rotate these operations do not really deform they do not change lengths for instance or they do not shrink they do not sort of make angles smaller. So, that is what rigid really is supposed to bring to mind. Now, what we will do next during the next lecture is to also look at other examples. So, of course, these are not the, the only interesting examples what about maps which deform. Okay. So, this is to be contrasted with maps which are sometimes called deformations they deform uh, lengths or angles or areas. Um, so, sometimes also called you know there are many different kinds of these. So, I am just using this as a loose term to mean something that does not act in a rigid fashion. Okay. So, we will look at examples of these. So, there are things called dilations and then there are more general linear transformations, okay. but that will be for next time.